Not so long ago, there would have been only one word on Scotland's match report for a game like that. Brave. But in 2018, we find ourselves in a brave new world. Instead of one syllable, we find ourselves asking two questions. How did South Africa win that game? And what does Scotland need to do to win games like that in the future? Well, here's a little bit on both of those questions, but only in brief because Ireland went and beat the bloody All Blacks the weekend. It only left me so much time to look at this game. In the same match report, there wouldn't have been even a single word written for South Africa because wins like that were just what the Springboks did. Winning every game but winning them all nastily is what South African rugby is about. Under Vazzy Erasmus, which still sounds more like it should mean Broken Calculator or Purple Elephant in Welsh than it does sound like a name, South Africa have stripped their game right back. Nothing is overcomplicated anymore and very little is actually complicated at all. You have to deal with the big boys, then you have to deal with the fast boys. If you deal with both boys, then out come the kicky boys and the chasey boys. No boy is doing too many jobs. Each boy left to do what that boy does best. Honestly, there's more boys here than there is at one of Israel Folau's slumber parties. The South African game plan works almost like a flowchart, working through a series of simple processes to allow space for the next, but with cheat arrows, making them equally willing to chuck the ball about early if the space opens up. A lot of this is dependent on the decision making of the scrum off, which has made Faf de Klerk incredibly vital to this team, but means as Embraer Papier slowly beds himself in and gets used to the systems, he's getting better and better and he had an excellent game on Saturday. Scorn. As I've talked about before, Scotland's attack is more reliant on options than a lazy Hollywood producer. The idea is to isolate defenders to make them think, then strike whilst they're making that decision. In these two passages, Scotland are basically running the same move. Here, the only option is to pass it on, making it another defender's problem, or to crash it straight up, making it very easy for the defender to deal with. So nothing happens. But here, each player has multiple others to pass to several kick options. So many places to step. It results in a try for Peter Horn, who apparently wasn't shot for committing this rugby hate crime against Fiji last week. With these options, Scotland can attack as they dream. Their attack requires forwards and backs floating in tandem in all channels, far more dynamic than the usual pod structure. Likewise, this is why Finn Russell continues to pull shit like this, because the less predictable he is, the more force a defender has to put in when he catches the ball. Hogg's reputation means defenders tend to stand off him and wait to see what he can do, and considering Hogg has more flash and flair than a cheetah wing aviators, that that so often backfires on them. This is Scotland's other try, scored off an interesting line-out move. A brief history of this move. The move in its original form was invented by a coach called Lynn Jones in the late 90s or early noughties whilst he was coaching Neef. The Wales coach at this time was Graham Henry, who saw the move being used by Neef and pocketed it, later using it in a 2011 World Cup final whilst in charge of New Zealand. Scotland have since adapted it, this is the second time they've scored off the move, but for them it isn't a pre chord play in the way it was for the All Blacks and the Welsh All Blacks. It's a shout one player makes if they think they've spotted it on. In this case, pinball wizard Hamish Watson spots the gap, calls it and scores the try. So ends that brief history lesson. Scotland's issue on Saturday was that they tried to attack when they should have been setting, they overplayed. They didn't give themselves time to build the options, just chucking it wide all the time when it wasn't on, when they didn't have enough men out there to do damage. And speaking of chucking it wide, I'm only going to touch on this briefly because I could rant all day about it and I like to keep this channel about my observations rather than opinions, but this yellow card is utter, utter bullshit. For all the talk of high tackles and late smashes, the constant carding of perfectly legitimate intercept attempts is my biggest bugbear in how modern rugby is refereed. LaRue reads the play, shoots in, and is less than an inch off taking the ball and running under the sticks. Yes, he puts his hand out for the ball deliberately, but he's trying to catch it. By this logic, every single dropped catch ever is now a yellow card offence. Imagine that, a sim bin for every fumbled ball. The Dragons would spend most of the time with only three players on the pitch. Actually, that'd probably be an improvement, but that's beside the point. The moment Horn does the double pump, any hot-blooded back is going for that intercept. It's virtually identical to this try by the other thing in rugby that makes me really mad, Israel Folau, who ignores his closeted instincts and runs away from the other boys and under the post to score. The only difference between the two instances being about an inch. However, I won't rant further because in the end, that yellow card did not lose South Africa the game, leaving the match report exactly as you'd expect and exactly as it should be. South Africa? Physical, attritional, clinical. And Scotland? Brave. Hello, it's me again. I'm going to do this very quickly. So um, thank you very much for watching that um, and sitting through that and through all of these I've done lately. Um, thank you to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon. I appreciate it. Thank you to everyone that, that hasn't as well. I don't think any less of you. Um, thank you much to Ruby Warfare for coming to sponsor the channel. Uh, you can use their offer code BOK30 for 30% on their Black Friday sale. Uh, unless you're in the future beyond Black Friday, in which case just use SU20 for 20% off instead of 30. Uh, or use, you know, 20% off anyway if you prefer poorer deals. Um, otherwise, I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to run away and probably have a lie down, maybe a bath.
Have a nice time.